Good day, everybody. Welcome back uh, to our Using Python and GIS series. This is video number six. Um, we are at the point where we are taking the data that we've created and we're adding portions into our massive script that performs the normalized difference for moisture and vegetation and we're also going to create a normalized burn ratio uh, image. Okay, so last time we created in our script um, some images for radiance and reflection and we also created some composites, okay? We created a composite image of bands one through seven and also bands four, three, two, and seven, okay? This video, we're gonna talk about creating a uh, NDVI and an NDMI. Okay, a vegetation index and a moisture index, plus we're also going to create the burn ratio. All right. Now, we need to step back for a second because I think I made, it's not an error, but an, an omission that would be extremely helpful to take care of. So, um, what I've been doing is after I unpacked all of those uh, Landsat images with uh, out of the tar file. What I should have done prior to doing any uh, raster calculations is I should have gone into every one of those TIFF files and calculated the no data equals zero. Okay, because we get a uh, if you remember. If you bring up a Landsat image, it has a black boundary around it where there's no data. What we want to do is we want to automate the process of setting that property for no data equal to zero. Okay, so in the script, in the main script, we have in the area where it does the first raster calculator where it creates the radiance file and the reflectance file I have added in a line of code okay and in this loop and it's in the for loop so it does it to every band as it goes through and here it only needs to do it once well after this it's always set your no data is always set to zero from this point forward but I added a line called arcpy dot set raster properties underscore management. The in raster is the same as what we're calling to start doing our raster calculation. Okay. But then I add the no data equals and in, and in quotes a one space zero. And basically what that does is it goes in and makes no data equal to zero. So it doesn't ever get processed when you do the map algebra. Okay, so I've made this uh, update and I added ArcPy uh, set raster pro properties for no data. And I added that again into the for loop for when it, right before it starts doing the map algebra. Okay, so I've made that change. The next step, and what I'll do is I will put this part of the code um, in the description of the video so you can see that. Now, the next part of our massive script, and this is our massive script that we've been creating in the past five videos, okay, so the next step after doing the uh, band composites that we did before, so we did all of bands one through seven here, 
and then we did bands four, three, two, and seven here. Okay, after this part is when we start creating some indexes. All right, so the first one that I wanted to create was the vegetation index, and it's a sim simple calculations. Okay, so bear with me here as I kind of explain the block of code is really the paths and stuff are already set up above uh, in other places the paths are always the same other than you need to make sure that you have the indices directory uh, variable set so you can write it to the correct directory underneath your Landsat image and I've created two more variables, one for near IR, one for red, okay? Because the math for doing an NDVI is that you take the near IR band, you subtract it from the red band, and then you divide that by the near infrared plus the red band. Okay, so I've created two variables, one to hold our, uh, our near infrared band and one to hold our red infrared band. And that's always going to be the same. It's always going to be uh, band five and band four. Okay, so you can hard code the name of your, uh, your near infrared band and your red band you can hard code that into your code because it's never going to change it's always going to be the same okay then i created a variable for the numerator and one for the denominator now the spatial analyst float converts this raster into a make sure that it's a, a floating point number okay for the raster all right so we're calling the spatial analyst float and we are taking raster nir and we're subtracting the raster red so that creates the numerator then we create the denominator by giving it a variable name and we basically do the same command other than um, it's an addition problem okay so now we have the first part of our uh, formula, the near IR minus the red. And then we have the second part of our formula, which is the near IR plus the red. Then the next part of the formula for NDVI is we take this number and we divide it by this number. And here I'm calling the spatial analyst divide method and I'm just substituting the numerator and the denominator. And then that right there gets assigned to this raster variable name. And then I'm saving that raster to disk and giving it the name ndvi.img for an ima for a ERDOS imagine file. Okay, so once I run that, um, when it's finished, then I can bring, I can open up ARC, and um, you can see I already cheated and have everything done ahead of time. So here is the output of running that little script. It creates the NDVI for the entire scene. Now remember, we changed, we, we had the code um, take all the zeros and make those no data. And that's why we have a clean outline now okay because we did that way before when we first ran our big script that was the change that i made um, to my script to no data equals zero so now we have the ndvi the next that we're going to do is create this uh, normalized difference moisture index which is this image and basically really that is the only difference between NDVI and NDMI is the band that you use, okay? The near IR is always going to be band 5. So basically, I copied this block of code down one and then just made some modifications for saying that it's 
uh, NDMI, and I change the band for the second part of the calculation because it calls for the shortwave infrared band instead of the red band, remember? The step up here is band four. Well, the formula for moisture index is band five minus, minus band six divided by band five plus band six. All right, so I only needed to change the reference to band six. And then I changed the variable name to uh, shortwave infrared, all right, just so we understood what it's calculating there. I didn't uh, want it to say red again, all right? Then that creates at the end, when it does its divide, it creates and saves our ndmi.img. And if we look at arc GIS, this is what we get right here, is our moisture index. Then after I uh, create the moisture index, the next thing I want to do is do a burn ratio, okay? Uh, if, if this area has never had a forest fire or anything like that, if it's agriculture land, you don't really need to do a burn ratio, but um, you, you'll have it if uh, you run this on a particular uh, scene that you downloaded. It's all going to happen automatically anyway, so why not have information even if you don't need it, right? <laughs> all right, so going back to our code, again, I to create the uh, burn ratio, I copy the same block of code and I paste it down one into our massive script here. And, uh, of course, I didn't change the spelling in my code, but this would say creating the NBR, all right? But the only difference here is that it needs the second shortwave IR band, which is band 7. So I replace band 6 with band 7, okay? And then I run it, and it creates an MBR.IMG image. So now, when we run our script, it does everything that we want and creates these three basic indexes. The vegetation index, moisture index, and the burn ratio, okay? And then when we open those up in uh, ArcGIS, then we can have those done for the entire scene ready to go. And then the only thing that we need to do is maybe clip our study area that we're working with and, and make some maps out of that. All right, so this was a pretty short video, I hope. And now we got one more video in this series. Okay, I'm gonna make a video seven, and it's gonna be a little bit more complex than creating the, uh, these indexes here. What we're gonna do in the last video is we're going to use the same model of using our map algebra, and we are going to create a uh, land surface temperature uh, layer, okay? So if you want to do that ahead of time, you got a couple days before I do, uh, get that video out, but our last video in the series is creating that uh, land surface temperature uh, layer for analysis. Okay, so today we did our vegetation, our moisture indexes, and our burn ratio uh, layer. I hope this helped. If you have any questions uh, or comments, please leave them in the comments and be sure to subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. And you guys have a great day and we'll talk to you later.